What's going on, guys? It's Brad Hannon. And Sean Noonan. And welcome to the Insurance Sucks Podcast. Where we talk about anything but... Insurance, because it sucks. Listen, here's the deal. I started this podcast. We started this podcast as an outlet for our creativity, for our fun, to talk about side hustles, to talk about all the, the fun things that go along with business and life. And we have an amazing guest for you today. Jeremiah the Bull Evans is going to be joining us here in a little bit. Um, I'm just going to tell you is going to be joining you in a little bit because he's already joined us. We're filming this after the fact. And I'm going to tell you right now that the interview that we're going into with Jeremiah the Bull is absolute fire. Awesome. I think it's probably Incredible. one of the better podcasts or one of the best podcasts we've done out of like the six. I would say it's before. one of the better podcasts. General Agreed. speaking. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. A, 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 one of the better podcasts out there ever. ever. So ever. you're going to want to check this out. But first, tomorrow... <laughs> We're, we're taking my man to Ooh. his funeral. Yeah. My man's, <laughs> my man's got a funeral <laughs> scheduled for this weekend. Uh, getting married. Yep. And sure. 30. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, I th- Are you sure? If I make it after this weekend. <laughs> He's getting 35 married. days, I believe. Yeah, 35 days, but who's counting, no, right? Who's 35 counting? days, no. but who's counting? We're taking him on the bachelor party tomorrow, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Dirty Myrtle. Three days of uh, four days, three days, what, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Three nights, four days. Three nights, four days of nothing but golfing and booze and... Uh, drunken debauchery who knows yeah. who knows yeah. right <laughs> i think it'll be one of the more mellow bachelor parties i've ever been a part of but what do you think sean i've only been on a couple so there's really not a very high bar so far what about like <laughs> if you could if you were to compare it to the hangover it's gonna um, be more or less debauchery <sighs> I would probably say more. We, we have a larger group. The hangover was really condensed only oh, just a man. few guys. Don't remind yeah. me about the large group. Love everybody going, but man, large groups of men are very difficult to deal with sometimes. Yeah, as but you've e- seen easier than women. So. <laughs> yeah. This is true. This is true. How was Janae's bachelor party? Really wild or, or, uh, they, or pretty it chill. was as vanilla as you were thinking. <laughs> no, they had a good time, but they went to Savannah, Georgia. Like, yeah. what really are you going to do in Savannah and get in trouble? I don't like, know. Yeah. I don't know. But I think there's plenty we can do in Myrtle Beach. I think there's a lot. What yeah. is your, uh, what's your over-under for how many dollars I make gambling on the golf course? Uh, what's the number? Oh, I, yeah. A number is <laughs> 500 bucks. Oh, under. Yeah, right, dude. Come on. You're paying out over 500 No way. Hands no way. down. Definitely. Not a chance. It's not going to happen. Uh, I'm going to bring my A game. I haven't played much golf because I'm always working. Yep. But uh, you all that actually will be to your advantage the first day. It will. Yeah. It will. The more golf I play, the the worse I end up getting. I'll bet you more on Saturday than I will Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I bet, you, <laughs> yeah. I, bet you, I bet you would. I bet you would. So what the hell else is going on? I don't know. Nothing new with me. What's new with you? This is what I was worried about. See, it's three fucking minutes of like I knew we weren't gonna be able to talk. <laughs> this, this is great content. I'm I'm just trying to talk while thinking of. How do you not bring up my hair? Oh fuck! No. Duh! That's why I said well, nothing new with me. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is a staying. No, this, this is, is staying. staying it. Absolutely, no, we can't have this staying. <laughs> All right. So hey, how about the haircut? I was more worried about my haircut. Right? I know you are. It's always the case. It's the haircut it's brothers the case. today. That's we right. both got our haircuts. Hey, you know what? How you, long since you had you your know last what you've haircut? You got to throw in here <laughs> right about now. Okay, if you're watching, if you're listening to this on the audio format, you're going to want to check into this episode on the video because right about now, Eric's going to throw in the slow mo, yeah, yeah. slow mo of the flow <laughs> as a tribute, as a tribute to. Sean's locks. Did you save it? I can't believe I didn't bring that up. That's crazy. I'm just, I I can't believe it didn't get brought up before when we were talking about. Hey, what are we? How are we going to kick this podcast? I off? was waiting for it, but I don't know. No, I did not save the hair. You didn't save it. I did. Why would I say? How long weird. did you grow that hair out? Four and a half years. No, it's not. Four no. and a half years. No, it was not. Four yes, it was. Years. It was before I went to California. It was from the day you started. It was from Longer before you that. started. The, I cut my hair two days before we went to California. In, which was before you started selling insurance. Which was insurance in 2017. Me, before you started selling insurance. Before I started selling insurance. <laughs> oh my God. I was 27 Four years. Four and a half years of growth years gone old, out the window. 27 years old when I last got my hair cut. Wow. Oh yeah. my gosh. I mean, great. I had like had a trim where like it took, you know, half inch off or whatever. For yeah, but that's end, still, but that's, that is wild. Four, Four and, and a half, half years. years. It was a commitment. We need to like rest in peace. Like we do. You know, wow, we do. that's you know. Can we just sa- have a moment of silence yeah. on this podcast of for Sean's lost locks? locks. Okay, 
fun. Good. That's good. That's good. You know what they say though? It's long hair don't care, and I live by that motto. Not the truth. <laughs> it, you, in fact, do have to care when you have long hair. Yeah, that, that's why you cut it, right? Correct, because I don't want to care anymore. To be clear, Janae wanted it cut for the wedding, and he's saying, right? He's saying, because the dude's already, it's, it's already happening, right? We know what happens, men, when we get married. It's already happening. And he's saying he didn't cut it because, I want to know in the comments section. I want to know in the comments, wherever you're seeing this, I want to know, do you think Sean cut his hair for Janae and for the wedding, or... Because it was getting too hard to maintain. <laughs> what do you say? I mean, for me, I know why I did it. Why'd you do it? Because I did A, my hair's thinning. <laughs> I don't I don't want to go bald. I mean, if I'm being hundred percent honest. We're going we're being honest on this, right? Brutally yeah, honest. This is the honesty about. podcast. That's right, yeah. No, I mean my I, I've been dealing with my hair's been getting thinner. Oh man, uh, it might be all the stress. It might have been in the stress. Uh I I've, I've heard from a few people that do hair that COVID hair is a real real thing. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, for real. Like you start thinning and balding a little bit, and you know I wear hats all the time. Oh wait, COVID hair is a real thing. Like like COVID having COVID affects makes you- your 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 hair growth. Wow. Correct. Well, just like we're not allowed to talk about COVID or politics yeah. on your bachelor party, we're not allowed to talk about COVID <laughs> on this podcast. But there's probably other podcasts you can do your research on probably. about thinning hair and COVID. But I wear a lot of hats. Wearing hats isn't good for hair sustainability. So I either had to do my hair, which when you have long, curly hair is a Did process. Did you do a spreadsheet on this? No, no. It's just what goes through my head. <laughs> what we're going to call it's probably oh, the uh, FCC saying we can't talk about COVID. Wow. Uh, um, um, and then, you know, I was just like, you know what? Like every time I didn't want to wear a hat, I'd either have to do it or I'd have to put it in a, in a ponytail. And when you have curly hair, it's just not the same. So I was like, you know what? I want to be able to go out and not do my hair and not care and not put a hat but on. But you did it today. You did your hair. Yeah. This took me like four seconds. <laughs> yeah. Same. I wake up like this. Yeah. Yeah. So a like lot this. easier than brushing it, making sure it's not tangled and. <laughs> The, the whole process <laughs> got to be wet when you're done so it can dry. It looks like I, yeah, I, I just, I really feel like we should get to some content. <laughs> what do you say? I feel like this is, should this, we get to some content? This is what the people want to know about. You, let me know. Okay. <laughs> let me know when you watch the, the episode, when you watch the whole episode, do you want to hear more about Sean's hair and why he cut it? Or do you, should we get to more content here with Jeremiah the bull? I think more people are going to care about my hair. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. so too. Seriously guys, stay for this episode or stay for this interview. It's going to be great. See you on the backside. Welcome back. Uh, This week, we've got Jeremiah the Bull Evans, who's a self-made millionaire by age 25, founder of the Alpha Financial Agency, host of the Bullpen Podcast. Love that name, by the way. Uh, It's almost as good as it sucks, right? Almost. A certified (laughs) badass. And he's all about helping his clients build personal wealth and lives by his mission statement of be great or be nothing. Nothing. Be great or be nothing, baby. That's what I'm talking about. What's up, Jeremiah? How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you guys doing? Dude, I am. I'm excited. I'm I'm pumped. I'm excited. I got to follow some of your conference. We're getting you right on the tail end of your conference. You should be fired up. You should be jacked up. I'm sure you left. Oh, and you know what? I just realized I have that same whiskey gun behind him. (laughs) Squirrel. Yep. (laughs) That's it. What what you got in there? Oh, I got a... Oh, I think that one is a uh, Glen Levitt 15. Oh, there you go. I got basil Hayden in mine because I actually drink out of it. The basil <laughs> Hayden good daily drinker. Oh, oh yeah. man. Well, we're catching you on the tail end of your conference. Uh, you're, you're probably fired up. Why don't we start there, man? Tell me about the conference. Tell me, you know, like your first big event, right? Yeah, this was the first big one. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm pretty juiced after this one. It, it, <laughs> It's been incredible how controversial it was, man. Like, really? Like, oh yeah. Have you guys not seen it? Uh, Go look not, up. No, not if that. If you part, guys want to have some fun, if you want to do it right now while I'm talking, or if you want to do it after, go look on Twitter, Reddit, Google, King AlphaCon. Right, right now it's been like when I announced AlphaCon, it blew up all over Twitter and Reddit, um, and you know TikTokers got a hold of it, and Chris D'Elia. Do you know who he is? Mm, uh yes i do i actually yeah, i did famous, see that i did yeah. see that part yeah well he got it because of all this stuff and then after alpha Con, there's been more stuff and number one it's been just incredible 
to see how controversial it was just because it was called AlphaCon. I mean, it's a fucking <laughs> business conference, right? <laughs> you know, but it's about being your best self and being, you know, someone who can make a difference in this world. Hence being an alpha, an alpha, you know, that defender, that protector, the person who the does whatever it takes. The thing I've ever seen. That the cringiest, the, the cringiest <laughs> thing I've ever seen says That's Joe crazy. Butt Politics. Wow. Oh, dude, you could go through this. And it's tens of thousands of tweets, retweets. It's still happening, you know, especially after the conference. But what, what's so amazing is it was the most incredible experience of my life. And I'm getting a flood of DMs, comments, calls from people who came to the event, literally tell me it was life changing. Yeah, right. We had yeah. some of the most incredible speakers there. Uh, just the power that was in that room, just a lot of you know, real, you know, God's honest truth, no bullshit. You know, like right, we talk right. business, but we talk life. We talked about freedom. We talked about what you need to do to take control and stop being a fucking victim. And you know what you have to do in order to make a difference in this world, kind of along with the motto that I live by. And it was, it was absolutely unbelievable, you know, just truly incredible. So, so yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure with a lot of the, the bad publicity there, if you want to call it bad publicity, right? It's still good publicity. I'm sure the attendance is going to grow just based off of all the haters. How many people did you have there at the first event? There was 200 people there okay. um, at the first one. We had to kick out just a little over 10 protesters. <laughs> Get event. out of here. Get uh, out of here. That's no, yeah, we had to kick people out. Uh, who tried to show up and ruin it. Uh, Dude, if you don't have protesters at your event, then you're your event right. is not worth a shit yeah. anyways. It, it's wild, man. <laughs> and when you're there and you spend $200,000 plus to put on an event and you're just sitting there like, man, I wish people could just, I wish they would just sit and listen to what these people are saying, you know? It's just, it's about how to be your best self. Like, it's just, I'm like, man, I just wish they could just, you know, hear us out, right? Um, but yeah, dude, it's just, the good people, you know, everyone's talking about the good pussy, bad pussy. It's dude's been awesome, you know, because what happens is you get a flood of bad publicity. No one says anything except for the people who hating on you. And then a week later, and after it kind of settles down, then you get this flood of, you know, support good, yeah. that comes in. You're like, man, I wish you guys would have done that while this was happening, but it still feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had, yeah, to, they had to see of, it through um, first and kind of take it all in. And then, yeah. you know, and then it comes through like, man, I'm grateful right. that I attended that event. That was yeah. awesome. They have to wait yeah. for the next hot topic thing for everyone to be pissed <laughs> off about. So they don't go after that. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to have to go check that out a little further uh, yeah. when we, when we get off this, cause I did not see that. And I know, and I know there was a couple people there actually that, uh, that, that had good things to say. I mean, at least their posts were, were, ready for day two or, you know, pump for day one or whatever. So I wasn't paying attention. And that's typically like my MO, right? Is I don't pay attention to anything that's negative, right? I'm, I'm trying to focus on the positive. So uh, it's perhaps why I didn't see it, but, uh, but that's awesome, man. And, and, you know, I'm sure it's going to continue to blow up. I know you had some awesome speakers there. Um, we didn't get a, you know, we read your bio here, um, which is great, but I want to hear it from you, you know, and I've, I've listened to a couple other podcasts you've been a part of. I love your story. You know, when I reached out, that was one of the first things I said, man, I really love your story. I connect with your story. Um, would love to, to kind of start, pick up, you know, back in the, in the day before you were be great or be nothing, you know, maybe back when you weren't alpha, right. If you can use that word anymore, we might have to, <laughs> might have to totally change the whole. Yeah, you might want to bleep right? that one out. Yeah. Be <laughs> buzzword before you were, beep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So back before you were alpha, when you were a beta, we'll, <laughs> we'll really go in. Right. Um, uh, what was, what was that like? Like the early Jeremiah, the bull days when he wasn't Jeremiah, the bull man. Dude, you know, it's funny. Cause everyone, you know, so my nickname's the bull, right. But like, it's funny you ask me that because, you know, my I didn't give myself that nickname, right? right? I did not come up with that shit. As a matter of fact, I hated it with everything. Anytime <laughs> someone called the bull, like I was pissed. And it's because where it came from was, it started out, my nickname was the fat bull, right? <laughs> oh, um, you know, chunky. Eh? It's all good. I was a chunky, you know, kid. You know, I liked my I liked my mom's cooking. So it is what it is. I was a good kid, right? Right. But uh, my nickname was the fat bull. And, um felt like my entire life growing up, all I had to deal with was just constantly living in fear of what people were going to do to me, you know, what they're going to say to me, what, what, you know, um, on a daily basis, you know, um, I was dealing with them, like, you know, chasing me down, spitting on me, tackling, beating the shit out of me, or, you know, what one of the things to do was tackle me, you know, beat the shit out of me, but like pin me down. There's like five or six of these kids would always do it to me. 
Um, and they would just pour chocolate milk down my throat, you know, saying the fat bull needs his milk and they'd shove my mouth with tater tots. And so that was um, given that nickname was not only given to you, but like by, by negative circumstances in your life, like the fat bull. Wow. Yeah, no. So, and actually, so like, it's funny because, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, how my life was, you know, like I, you know, like that's what I was dealing with. Right. And, um, it wasn't until my dad, you know, if you've heard my story, like forced, something out of me you know where i where i had i learned to fight back right yeah, I looked, yeah. like he forced me to fight back he gave me no other choice and he yeah. gave me that motto at an early age of be great or be nothing because not only was i allowing it to, like in the truth the truth is man like you're saying the more i talk about the story the more i look back on it and the more i, I realize I'm like, I'm like dude it, it only happened because i let them yeah All right the only reason they bullied me the only reason i was a victim is because i let them yeah. You know, I was too big of a pussy to stand up. I was too big of a pussy to do anything back. Right. Um, and it wasn't until my father forced that out of me, you know, and made me, you know, to actually stand up and fight back and see who I really could become that I did start fighting back. And then my name changed from, you know, stop calling me the fat bull. They would just call me the bull. And I still hated that name because I knew where it came from, but it wasn't until, you know, I really just wanted to start this journey. And I had, you know, I did some serious work, you know, mentally to figure out like who I want to become and what I want to do. And one of the things that come, kept coming to mind is, you know, the, the, is that, you know, I am the bull, right? And I'm going to take charge. That that name's not going to have any power over me anymore, right? That That's so that, big. Yeah. That word, you know, it's not going to make me cringe every time you hear it because think about it, I'm going to own it. Yeah. You know, like I'm going to take the power back and say, fuck you guys. Like this is mine now, you know? Right. So I go by the ball and I, you know, it's, it's pretty clear. Like when people see me on Instagram, like, you know, my business is called alpha financial, you know, or alpha con, and my, my yeah. name is the bull, like dude, total douche battery. Like, total douchebaggery. It is dude. You know, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's not you like know? the, it's not like the alpha, like we're just like, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I, I totally get what you're saying, man. I, yeah. I get it. Right. That's wild. It, it's so funny that you said you use that uh, term douchebaggery to describe that stuff because it can't. I mean, listen, from the outside, man, when you, and that's why I wanted you to jump right into your story, because, you know, the outside looking in when you don't hear that story, when you don't know where it comes from, you don't know the background. You think this this arrogant dude just, you know, grew up and think he's the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. And he's calling himself alpha and the best and the goat, yeah. and whatever it is, man. And, yeah. you know, um, it's just that's that's never the reality. No, nope. And it's all surface layer, too. Cause, right. I mean, what, I'll be honest, like when I looked it up, I was like, all right, you got a young guy relatively built. He's got one sleeve, um, you know, pretty good shape, very confident, calls himself <laughs> alpha. I'm like, man, I feel like I know who this guy is already. <laughs> Sean's like, fuck, I'm going to be on the podcast with, with two, two brads. brads. <laughs> but hearing that story, I'm like, that is incredible because I mean, you took the biggest, probably one of the biggest negatives in your life, I'd imagine. Like, what a terrible feeling growing up and yeah. just being, I mean, there's bullying and then there's literally being pinned down and having tater tots shoved down your throat. It's and, a different level for sure. Taking away. Hey, I still love tater tots and chocolate milk. <laughs> I would hope so. They're delicious. I still eat them. <laughs> uh, but taking that negative and turning that into a positive and then like owning that, because I mean, I think most people who struggle with anything in life is out of fear yeah absolutely and you took the fear and not only did you just use that as motivation but you said you'll never be able to use this against me ever again because that's right. who i am that's huge yeah. you 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 said that your dad literally forced you and i know and i know kind of the, the story like go you're not coming back in till and, and you don't even have to get into that but like what no, was I that i just want to know like if that moment was the moment that it changed forever or i want to i want to know if that was a moment that changed you but then it was progressive throughout the rest of your life to, you know, continue to go after that. Or was there a, literally like, cause every, some people, you know, talk, have that flip the switch moment where the, the light bulb goes off and you're never the same other people. It's like the light bulb goes off, but there's obviously a long process uh, to go through. So what, what would you say? Was it a process or was it like, that was the moment? That's a great question, man. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's I mean, not even I, on yeah. my show notes either. It just came up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question, bro. Uh, dude, the truth is, like, you know, like just for everyone listening, just so they can, uh, you know, understand, like, when I, there was one day in specific when I was about eleven where they did it again. You know, it's just it, every single day I did not want to wake up. As a matter of fact, it was easier for me to go to sleep, and you know, because that was safe. 
right? I did not want to wake up because the moment I woke up, I knew I had to go to school. I had no choice. And so immediately those butterflies in your stomach come up. You're just, you know, like before you get in a fight, even though I don't know if I'm going to get a fight, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I just, that's, I'm just waiting, right? Just sometimes before school, I got my backpack and I'm just puking, you know, before I go to school, right? One day in particular, they happened again. And, you know, they, they, and I don't know what it was, but at this moment, like, I snapped in a way, like, I snapped in a way that I was bawling, you know, like I was, I was so destroyed. Rage. Rage Yeah. Yeah. But just like, I just sat there and this is what I tell people is I just sat there on my hands and knees after they ran off. And I just, you know, I got chocolate milk in my hair. I got tater tots in my mouth. My my nose is bleeding. And, and I'm just sitting there, just this fat kid, just looking and I'm just, I'm looking at all these kids watching and you know, and the thing is, like, you know, some of them, they like, that's the truth is, man, I looked at them and it, I'll never forget their faces because I, they they felt bad. You know, wow. I knew they felt really bad. But that's the point is I just I just sat there and I see this in their faces and I just I, I think, why won't any of you help me? You know, like what? Like, why won't anyone help me? And I just in this moment of pity, I just no one's no one's I literally was saying no one's helping me you know no one can help me I'm screwed you know like I'm stuck so I just went home and my dad just you know kind of you know I don't want to take up too much time with you know this whole thing but like my dad sees me and you know something in my dad's eyes snapped like wow. and I don't mean snapped in a way like he snapped at me but you you know when you see like and like something snaps in someone's eyes like something changed and everything and like you know, like some, it got real serious real quick, grabs me by the arm, pulls I said, no one's ever coming to save you. No one's coming to save you. And if you don't know me, like I, I was obsessed with Superman because to me, Superman was visible and Superman was bullied as a kid, you know? What's your thoughts on Superman, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> I got a big Marvel um, guy here. Marvel oh, yeah? Batman. <laughs> hey, I, I wanted to be said. Superman. And my dad told me, he says, you're going to have to be the hero of your own story. You're going to have to be Superman because no one else is going to do it for you. And he, you know, literally kicks me out of the house and says, you cannot fucking come home until it's done, until you find those kids, you beat them up. Right. And to me, I, I had no choice. Right. I had absolutely no choice. So I, I did. Like, I was pissed, by the way. I was pissed. At him. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? You know, like I wanted to go down my room and go to bed. Right. You know, I wanted to just, you know, cower away, right? And he he wouldn't allow, he forced it, it's something in me to go out there and do something different, right? So I went out and, you know, I did, man. I knocked on this kid's door. I was scared shitless. And the moment I saw him, he came to the door, I fucking just had a moment of rage and I can't go home until this is done kind of thing. Grab him and I beat the fucking shit out of him, man, <laughs> right on the front porch. And so they uh, come back to your question, you know, it was like, it was this moment right here that you know, I want to get to is because when I, I after I beat the shit out of him, I thought I was in trouble. You know, I'm like, I'm going to jail. <laughs> so so I, right. I, I, I'm running home. <laughs> but I wasn't just like running home. You know, like, it was this sense of supreme confidence, this sense of finally, for the first time in my life, feeling proud of myself, you know, finally, for the first time in my life, feeling like I, I did it like I like, wow. Like I faced him, you know, I, I did. And that's why I just kept running home saying I did it. I did it. And like, I was saying like, I am Superman, you know, I'm running home. Couldn't wait to show my dad and my bruised knuckles. Cause anyone who's <laughs> been in a fight knows it's not pretty, you know, it's not like movies, your hands yeah. get like swollen, you know, and all this shit. Right. But it was mine's, that mine's still swollen. <laughs> <laughs> it was that moment right there that changed my life. Wow. Um, because of the immense, like, I can't tell you how much fear, like my whole body was just shaking going over there. I was so scared, but like every time I just wanted more than anything to go home. I didn't want it. I just like praying to God, like, please don't make me do this. But I just, I felt for some reason, I can't go home. You know, I can't go home till stuff. So I had no choice. Yeah. And right. it forced, and I just like, I was so immensely just scared, man. And the moment, like all of a sudden, this fear just immediately turned into from fear to like flight to just, you know, fight because that was the only escape right. and running away, just like this, like, holy shit. You know, when like, like you jump off a cliff or you face your fear, like, 
like that address. I don't know when you jump off a cliff. No, I have not. I've not experienced, <laughs> not done any cliff diving recently, but don't but I it, yeah. but I do know the feeling of conquering your fears. Absolutely. Yes, and yeah. it's just it's that moment that I always refer back to whenever I encounter something with fear. I always remember this moment because it was the greatest feeling I've ever felt in my life. I've had more feelings like that yeah. after I faced those fears, but you know, like. Did I encounter more things after? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I got into a lot of fights after that, right? Right. Uh, but it was the thing probably is, had I to knew reel it back in. Yeah. <laughs> probably had so much confidence, had to reel it back. All right, now yeah. don't become a but bully. That's the thing is, yeah, there's so many things that I talked to you through about what's happened in my life, but everything that's happened in my life or the journey of me becoming, you know, the bull, so to speak, or whatever, this guy, I always refer to back to that moment of the immense fear that I felt and the immense joy that came after. And so every time, I invest as an entrepreneur because dude, the thing is, I always refer back to fear, man. Like right. that fear, I've, I've had to really focus on a real interesting relationship with fear, you know, and how I learned that fear is such a good thing oh, it's you know, like as, we, as fuel. It's yeah, it, it's it's such it's the most incredible amount of fuel you could ever have. Fear is such an amazing thing for your life because it means you're fucking alive, man. Right. When you feel fear, you're alive, you're living. Yeah. You're doing something important. You're growing, right? And there's all the, you know, the things out there where, you know, there's no growth in the comfort zone. There's no comfort in the growth zone. But dude, the truth is, if you want to be anything significant in your life, whether it's fitness, whether it's, um, you know, entrepreneurship, whatever it is, you're going to have to own the fact that you will never escape fear. You should love the feeling of fear because yeah. without fear, there cannot be courage. Courage does not exist if there is no fear. And it was the moment of courage that built this confidence in me that I can do whatever the fuck I want. That fear is not something, it's, it's this visceral thing that I made up in my mind. And you know, yeah. the truth, I, hey, I got in fights after that, you know, like I've, I've taken some bloody, bloody yeah, I was going to say, you then, probably you know, got your ass whooped after that too. <laughs> so, so you didn't just turn into an overnight badass, right? Yeah. And <laughs> dude, but awesome. the truth is just every time I've encountered something as an entrepreneur, like writing that massive check to invest something that I don't know if it's going to work out or right. all these things, I always refer back to that moment. So has it been a journey? Absolutely. It's been a journey to become this person, but it was that moment that right. really that I always it. refer back to, you know? It's so big. That's so big, man. And and to to bring it to current, right? Because obviously that was eleven. We would have to go yeah. through like another twenty years of your your life to, uh, or I guess fifteen, sixteen years of your life to to get to current. And I know there was all kinds of circumstances, but like, what was the what was the major you know jump off moment for you uh, financially, where you use that fear as fuel, right? And and launch yourself into something um, that that set you up. I mean, I, I want to get into the Triforce of Wealth, obviously, yeah. which is you know essentially multiple streams of income and such but like what was the jump off moment for you when uh when you started to use that fear in your entrepreneurship right as as fuel to uh achieve the things you've achieved man yeah so my entire life you know like there's no secret like i i, I love this country like i love freedom and after that <laughs> moment in my life i became america. obsessed with freedom we need america sound effect yeah. eric yeah. <laughs> By that, the way, I was going to give him a bomb like we're like Brad Lee, but Bradley. I didn't know if this explosion was, is this correct? Or do we have to move it over here? Uh, it sounds right. Yeah. See, I was going to, yeah. I was going to give you the bomb. I'm going to give you the bomb there when you were dropping the fearful, bombs, but I was, though, yeah. I was, the fear held me back from pressing this button. You know, I didn't know if it was the right one or not. So. Yeah. You need a bald eagle sound. That's what you need. Right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hell yeah. Bald eagle um, sound. I love it. Yeah. So I can't like, you know, like my, entire, I became obsessed with the idea of freedom and also the idea of obsessed with the idea that if I'm not going to become someone great who can help other people in their life, who are struggling, then I'm a nobody. You know, when you do nothing, it means you are nothing. Right. So that was always my goal. I never wanted to work for anybody else. I wanted to be free. I wanted to be free to make a difference. I wanted to be free so I could make those choices to make an impact in people's lives. Right. So um, where it really kind of jumped on such worse. So I played my goal and dream was to play football. Right. And I did. I ended up playing football at BYU as a quarterback um, just for two years. Damn, though, you don't look got, like a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really slow. So it was either going to be a big, you know, strong quarterback or a small slow quarterback like it was okay. one or the other you know i'd think like a fullback or something yeah. man that's what everyone tells me yeah fullback <laughs> linebacker hey man yeah. if i'm gonna be slow as shit i better be able to take the beating you know so, <laughs> right right uh, well, damn it. so it was my dream to play football at byu and I, I got cut after two years and man that that set me on a spiral of of really just saying like you know it's time 
right? It's time to unleash, you know? And I was about 21 at that time, right? It's time to unleash, you know, what I've always dreamed of doing and building something that can make, you know, an impact in people's lives. And so what I did actually is I had two years of college left and I added up the number. I was like, okay, I'm about to spend $60,000 or was going to spend $60,000 on school with fucking dipshit professors. And I looked at that, this was probably one of the biggest moments of fear where everything launched for me is I said, you know what? It's time for the Bulls University. You know, I'm creating Jeremiah University. I'm going to make my own and I'm going to invest that same $60,000 into millionaire and billionaire mentors as opposed to these dipshit professors, right? Man, that's huge. Um, and so I did. I went into debt. I put it on credit cards. I took out personal loans from banks and um, just the same way as if I took out student loans, I took out $60,000 worth of loans and, and credit card and I spent on courses, on masterminds, on travel to go out to these events and dude like tell you what a yeah. lot of people told me i was an idiot and you yeah. know looking back that was a pretty dumb move <laughs> but at the same time you know that's where everything came from you know that's where i learned about triforce of wealth and that's where i learned about all these things and that's why i am where i'm at 26 where I'm at, my businesses are doing millions of dollars a year i have multiple businesses that are doing millions of dollars my main business is doing 25 million a year at wow. 26 you know and it's right. like the only reason i'm there is because I had the courage to say, you know, like, fuck what anyone else says, I'm going to invest in what I believe in, right? I'm right. going to find other people to show me the path. So I spent $60,000 when I had nothing, you know, on mentors, man, instead of college. And so, I you, so, you went to, so you went to, so you went to events, you, you met people, obviously you got in the room. We always talk about getting in the room, right? Getting around big time people. Um, this guy uh, has seen it firsthand and, and both of our, I mean, it's impacted both of us for sure, but I've, I've made an effort to get in the room, right? We've both gotten in the rooms and we've left different, but um, you know, we've always left with some actionable things. So like, you know, uh, that we can apply right away. Something that you take away from that mastermind, something you take. So after you spent the $60,000, right, let's uh, bring it back to college. Okay. Did you get a master's in marketing? Did you get like, what was your, uh, what was the skill that you left there with that you applied? Did you go right into life insurance at that point in time? Did you go right into coaching and courses? What, what was the, what was the jump off business that started? I'm, I imagine it's probably the business doing 25 million now. What, what business is that? Yeah, that, yeah. So, um, so I didn't launch. I refused to launch a coaching program until I had something that I could show. Okay. My my thought was Smart. until I've done millions of dollars in sales, I don't deserve to be a coach. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love that. And like, I I refused to launch, and I actually didn't even end up launching my first coaching program until I've done ten million dollars in sales in my first business. Yeah. Um, my first two things that I was doing was actually real estate and life insurance. Okay. Um, and the thing, the, where the Triforce Wealth comes from, if anyone doesn't know this, like what happened is I was learning from all these incredible people. I'm talking like some most wealthy people like you're ever going to meet, you know, successful people. And what I found is that they were all saying the same fucking thing. You know, they were all saying the same thing. It's just like in their different way of saying in their right. totally different branded way. And I sat there, I'm like, I'm like, wait, so all these wealthy people really have the same, you know, background in the sense of, they all became wealthy, not because they're investors, but because they own businesses. They took yep. all their business money from their businesses and that into investments and that exploded. But number one thing I learned from everyone is they all started and owned businesses. And you know what? They started and owned a lot of businesses. And yeah. if you look at the Constitution of the United States and how it's written, the Constitution is written to benefit the landowner and the business owner. That's what we're this country's built on. I saw right? you post that the other day. I, I love that, by the way, what you posted the other day about that and in relation to if you have a W-2 job, like it does not meet like dude, this guy's got a business from his fucking phone buying and reselling shoes. Like start a business doing that. Like start a yeah. business fucking in crypto I, I don't do something with your exactly. spare time because you've got spare time because you watched yellowstone and you watched fucking every other netflix i that's the first one that came to mind yeah. that's one i've never even watched but with all that time you start a side business do something start it at with a dollar of revenue and then you know grow it to a hundred thousand dollars in revenue um yeah, and, and, you and the reason is is because what you're saying about business, business is the only thing that's unlimited in its potential. Yeah. And it all comes down to you. So the bigger you grow, the bigger your business grows and your literal income is infinite at that point. There's no cap, there's nothing holding you back. If you want to take that business as big as you want, 100,000 a year, 200,000 a year, what about 100 million a year, right? Whatever it is, 
it's not capped by anyone but yourself and your yeah. ability to grow and expand, right? That's huge. Yeah. And what you touched on there too was how, you know, you look at the constitution, how, you know, this country is built upon businesses. That we That's where we need about. the bald eagle sound again, by the way. You keep saying constitution. <laughs> I just want to America or I don't know. Like, I can't make a bald eagle sound. Sorry. I, what I always say, and uh, I'm not the person that came up with it. Everyone else says it too. But like this country is going to legislate somebody wealthy. Put yourself in the position to be the person to benefit from it. Don't you, you can try to fight the system all you want, but at the end of the day, shit's going to happen regardless if we agree with it or not. Or not. The system and the government will legislate a industry, a person, a business wealthy. Absolutely. Put yourself in the position to benefit from that as much as possible, regardless of how you feel from it. So at the end of the day, your own opinion or your own feelings don't matter. The world is what it is. You have to, you have to adapt to survive. I love it. I love it, man. Break down that Triforce of Wealth. I mean, obviously, this is a whole course and a whole mastermind and a whole, you know, uh, another thing. And it's in and of itself, we're not going to get into the full thing with a, a hour long podcast. But, you know, what is exactly the Triforce of Wealth? What what makes up the Tri? I'm imagining three of something, correct? Yeah. Yeah. For $997, you can buy it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, 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 that's where the try comes from. It's a $3 savings. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Love it. So the Triforce is very simple. Number one, when you look at a tri the triangle force fire to draw it up, right? Number one priority is building businesses. Build your businesses, own as many businesses as you possibly fucking can. And there's so many things around that. Let me just actually just give you one idea. The Triforce Wealth is built because of three things, three things that I call the three killers of wealth. If you don't understand how to avoid these three things, you'll never be able to grow your wealth, right? So the Triforce Wealth is the Triforce Wealth because of these three killers of wealth. So they say there's more money to be made in avoiding losses than seeking gains. Well, if you can avoid these three type of losses in any business or anything you do, you'll make a lot more money than if you're out there just trying to hit the next big Shiba Inu or whatever the fuck it is, right? <laughs> so top three killers of wealth are number one, taxes. Taxes will destroy your wealth and the wealthy know the tax code inside and out. As a matter of fact, the tax code was not written by politicians. It was written by the entrepreneurs, the wealthy. The right. tax code is not a restriction, it's a roadmap. It shows you where to put your money, right? right. Those who understand it will get destroyed, don't, will not get destroyed by it. everyone else. Go, good luck paying your 20 plus percent, whatever it is, right? <laughs> right. Depending on the tax rates. So number one is taxes. Number two is volatility, right? If you're, that again, there's more money to be made in avoiding losses and seeking gains. So if you don't understand how to put your money in a place where you're not going to take massive losses, because the truth is taking a loss on your money is more devastating than getting a gain. Here's why. If you have a hundred bucks in account, you take a 20% loss you're at 80 bucks. Next year, you yeah. get 20% gain. Oh, sweet. You're back up to 100, right? No, right. Nope. you're actually right. Right. less. I mean, you have to have a bigger gain just to recover and break even from that loss. So that means not only you lost out on two years of opportunity gas and potential growth, but you've also just, you know, lost some money, right? right. So compound interest, eight in the world, Einstein says it, everyone knows it. It's a double-edged sword. It'll either benefit you or it'll destroy you. So you have to understand volatility and how to put your money in something that's not just going to take massive losses on, you know, on a regular basis. So avoiding those. Number three, inflation. In my opinion, at this point in our country, yeah, buddy. inflation should be number one. Probably I'll probably switch it around so it is number one because inflation is not is not everyone calls it the silent killer. I call it the democracy killer, right? Inflation is a killer of democracy. It destroys the middle class because what happens when inflation happens, the rich get richer and the poor get poor. Assets become worth more and those who do not have real assets become worth less. And who are the assets? The people who are already wealthy. People yeah. own assets who own businesses, who own real tangible assets becomes more expensive. Look at cars. Cars are more expensive just because of inflation. Owning assets will make you more wealthy. And what do we have in the middle class? Oh, we have 401ks. Oh, we have savings account that give you 0.01%. Fuck that, right? <laughs> so number three is inflation. So this, this bring it back, what the Triforce of Wealth is, is the best investment strategy or strategy just to build your, build your wealth that you're ever going to find because the same thing all these millionaires and billionaires do. Right. Number one is businesses. Number two is real estate. We all know the benefits of real estate with taxes, how it's never going to lose over the long term. It's the most tangible asset. You know, and if anyone ever has a question about if real estate's good, here's the truth. Land is the best investment you'll ever make because there will never be any more of it. 
Right. So buy as much land as you possibly can. That's what this country built on. Do it. Right. Right. So number number two is real estate. What a lot of wealthy people do is they either start a really big business in real estate. Notice notice all these wealthy people in real estate or investors in real estate. Their business is real estate. Right. So their business up here at the top is real estate. So if your business isn't going to be real estate, well, you still have to build the business and then you can flow that money into real estate. Right. right? For Everyone tax purposes. Start out as a real estate investor, bro. What with what? With what? <laughs> with these like cool hacks? No. I, you do see that. You do see that a estate. lot though with uh, with the advent of. Uh, uh, Airbnb. No, where, where you where you own the contract and not the asset, and you sell what wholesaling. Jesus, yeah. you okay, see that a lot. Even with then, wholesaling, do you obviously. own the asset? Memory. Do you get the no. benefits to avoid the three kills of wealth? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right? Do exactly. you really benefit from it if you're just trying to hack the system? No. Right. right. You know, so that's real estate, right? And number three is life insurance. And then I know we're not talking about insurance, but everyone always, I love that one, especially at the events when I talk and when I present this to people or whatever. Because they go like, what the "Fuck." You know, like, <laughs> but it's it's just if you understand life, it's insurance, because insurance sucks, insurance but not suck. for building wealth. Yeah. Just to talk about. Yeah. No, insurance like life insurance is the most best kept secret of wealthy. Yeah. And how they leverage it to build their real estate, to build their, uh, you know, businesses, not even to build just to back it, just right. to have something that's never going to take a loss with the guaranteed growth to never have to pay taxes on it with the tax free growth, you know, and to be able to have something that can actually keep up with inflation by never taking a loss. You know, it's the only thing you're going to find out there, plus something that's actually leverageable that you can use two or three times over, right? Yeah. So, and you guys understand this. So that's Triforce Wealth, right? All based around one word, leverage. And yep. Robert Kiyosaki calls it debt. I don't like saying debt because debt, they always have to go, oh, but it's good debt versus bad debt. Okay, all right. I call that's the good debt, debt yeah. leverage. <laughs> if yes, you have yeah. good debt, it means you're leveraging other people's money to grow you're you have an asset that you can leverage against and a lever when you leverage against something that's a tax-free occurrence that's something that's making your money work two times over and then now your compounding effect is happening greater than the rate of inflation or anything else so businesses real estate life insurance everything built on the idea of leveraging right and that's just what i keep hearing from all these wealthy people and it's like Everyone keeps like, wow, this is amazing. Like, well, I didn't come up with it. <laughs> you know, like, go read all these books. You'll see the same shit. I just yeah. happen to put a cool name on it called yeah. the Triforce of Wealth. You know, right? So, and then, yeah. and then you put it into practice in your own life, and and now not not or not only are you learning from what you you know learn, or not only teaching from what you learned in these masterminds with your sixty thousand uh, dollar school of hard knocks degree, right? Uh, yeah. But you're also applying it and able to teach from from that now, correct? Oh yeah, no, I own. I own 11 businesses right yeah. now. Awesome. A lot of them are already producing millions of dollars every single year, right? How the hell does one keep up with 11 businesses anyways? Leverage. Partners. <laughs> Leverage. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, exactly. Part no, so here's the key. I say leverage all the time and I talk about leveraging other people's money. Well, I also talk about my businesses leveraging other people's networks or just leveraging other people. Right. Leverage is the key to growth, right? Leverage is just how you make more money, it's just how you do things. When I hire the right people and put them in place, I just have to manage them. They are building the businesses. I'm managing it. I provide, you know, whether it's capital or I provide, you know, my knowledge and expertise on what to avoid. That alone, I know how to build a million dollar business. I've done right. it multiple times, you know? Right. So I own I own multiple businesses. I own a ton of real estate. And I own a lot of life insurance that people, I'm not gonna tell them the number, but I own a lot of it, right? <laughs> you know, and it's it's created a lot of wealth and I'm only 26. You know, I can't wait till, you know, I get to sit down with my kids and be like, hey, look what your dad did for you. <laughs> and, and, just to, and just to bring it back, it started with life insurance. I mean, obviously you, you went through the, you went through the masterminds, everything like that started with like li life insurance. So you went out and got a, a license and you just started selling life insurance to, to create capital then to, essentially build a business with that, invest in real estate, invest in your own life insurance policies, and then, you know, so on and so forth. Yep. Life insurance is where I first started. It, it just That's sounds too easy. Started, you know, right? it just makes it sound so easy. I, uh, I, I, you know, I, we won't get into my whole story, but I started an insurance by happenstance, right? Total, you know, accident, just tripped into it and started to make some good money. And, you know, and, and it was that, that was my light bulb moment, right? Because I never grew, I didn't have that light bulb moment at 11. I grew up like, Hey man, I'm just working construction my whole life. This is what I do. This is what my dad does. This is, I'm sure what my dad's dad did. I never met him, but you know, this is what my family does. And so, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm working construction. I'm happy. I don't need a whole lot. But then I started to realize, wow, with a business, right, there's no ceiling to my potential. And so now the only thing holding me back is me, right? And, and it is my decision to either A, stay the same or B, get better. So I chose to get better. And I'm still choosing to get better, right? Still, still got to choose to get better every day. Um, well, dude, I want to wrap this up. I respect your time. Want to wrap this up with with some uh, some non business related stuff, right? And I and I think I have a feeling where this is going to go because I, yes, I am. you know, you, Sean knows what I would say if you ask me this question. So, um, you know, when you're not working, right? When you're not when you're not building these businesses, what are you doing to enjoy your free time? Uh, what what is what is Jeremiah the Bull do for fun? That's a good question. <laughs> oh, man, Probably dude. builds businesses, yeah, dude. I have so fun. much yeah. fun doing what we do. Like we, we have a blast doing what we do. This is a, you know, this is a whole, uh, you know, this podcast is a whole, um, you know, manifestation of wanting to have more fun this year because I did, I focused way too much on business, way too much. And I, and it just got into, you know, personal life, family life, things like that. So this year I just want to have more fun and do more yeah. things like this, that which ultimately serve a purpose to make more money but are a lot more fun. So you let the man answer the question. If, if Sean asked me that question, I would probably say, this is fun. This is yeah. what I do for fun. Um, but yeah, I want to hear, I want to hear what you do for fun, man. Well, it's, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the hardest questions you probably ask any entrepreneur <laughs> yeah. is because my wife will tell me, I, I I've got this sick obsession that if I don't, if I'm not doing something, I feel like I feel more stressed out not doing something for sure because I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like almost this weird twitch. I'm like, I got to do something, you know? Yeah. So, it's what, what you just said about creating the fun. That's one of the signs you're an entrepreneur is you have to force yourself to have fun. <laughs> like you have to actually plan <laughs> yeah. out and force yourself to go have fun. Even Forced be, fun time. Right, you yeah. know, but that thing is like what other people, cause they're like, I enjoy this. I think I go to bed thinking about this. I wake up thinking Absolutely. about this. I'm constantly thinking about this, you know, but just to kind of, yeah, just my favorite thing to do is actually just spend time with my dogs. Um, <laughs> there you go. I could dude, I'm, I'm serious. Actually, this is something like, it means a lot to me is like, wow. you know, you guys know in business, there's a lot of backstabbing. There's a lot of disloyalty and, you know, a lot of, a lot of hurt that comes in it. You know, it's not easy. Right. And what I've experienced in my life is I don't really like people a whole lot, even though I force myself <laughs> to be around them. So I like I, I, I actually, <laughs> now you're speaking Sean's language. Right. Yeah. I actually enjoy one of my favorite things to do every single day is to go spend time with my dogs because dogs, are the most loyal and loving creatures on the planet. Most they love you more than anything. They'll Man, literally die for when you. When you do have kids, you're going to be really let down because <laughs> dogs are dogs are like, you know, super easy, super. They are the most loyal things. They love yes. you all the time. But sometimes my son loves my wife more. Sometimes he loves <laughs> me more. So it yeah. just depends. So it always Pretty changes. Dirty. Dogs are consistent, you know? Yes. Yeah. All you got to do is pull out a treat and they love you again. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So anytime I can get to just spend time with my dogs, is probably the most relaxing thing in the world for me. I immediately just, I get a focus on just, you know, it sounds some cheesy, but like to me, it's like I feel safe. You know, like yeah, I, I yeah. know no one, no one here. Like it's my dogs. You know, like, it's I, your like safe I love place. being around them. They're my boys. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. So what well, do you hey. got? We gotta know what kind of dogs. A uh, big American bulldog called Sarge. Sergeant. There you go. Love it. One hundred twenty pounds, massive dude. Um, and then the other one's named Chevy. He's a uh, he's a eight pound uh, old English bulldog mixed with a boxer. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, I awesome. got an 80, 80 pound blue nose pit yeah, and, an, and an arm tat, right? And a sleeve. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, we're like brothers. Yeah, and this guy, 45 pound uh, basset hound. <laughs> he's, got, <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a big old basset hound that just went to boarding school. Boarding he just, school. He just he, sent her to boarding he school. He dealt with some so uh, anxiety issues. We'll call it <laughs> hey, that, you're so. smart, though. Yeah. It's one of the best things you can do for your dogs. You got to teach oh, it the right down. way. He's been back for about a week and a half, and it's night and day different. Still the same dog, but. Yeah. much better behaved. You really should have just it. kicked them out of the house and said, you're not coming back until you figure out this anxiety. You go kick some other dog's ass <laughs> and then you can that come back. That was the issue. He was aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Poor anxiety ridden, yeah. uh, whatever you call it. What kind of dog? Basset hound. Basset hound. Yeah. Freaking basset hound. Hey, last thing too, because I know you're happily married. The, the last thing was the second to last thing. This is the real last thing. Uh, tomorrow, speaking of forced fun time, right? Tomorrow, this guy's forced me to go on his bachelor party. Forced We're going thing. to... Uh, it's Myrtle Beach having a little weekend golf getaway um, with the boys, but he's getting married in 
of a very short amount of time. Dude. What four, five, what advice would you have for someone uh, going into uh, into marriage, man? Ending their other their than don't single do it, life. That's what other than says. don't do it, right? <laughs> other than don't do it because it's a podcast recording. When we yeah. shut off the recording, then you can give the real advice. <laughs> <laughs> brutal honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Like you know, like I, like the word brutal is important. Brutal yeah. honesty. If you and your wife can agree to be brutally honest with each other. And just not, and just, and also just like, I'm not going to take, we're just going to talk and just say what's on our hearts, you know, what's on our minds. It, you know, like when, when you're, when you're willing to do that, you know, like, yeah, you're going to fight, you know, yeah, you're going to argue, but it gets, it, it shuts it off real quick. Cause I, Dude, you know my background. Like, I believe in fighting. You know, it's not like me and my wife are decking out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I believe. If I you believe did, she in, would you know, win for sure. Yeah, yeah, I believe in. I believe in the fight. I believe in the fight is a fight for good. You know, if you're fighting, it means you're fighting for something, right? You know, and so it's not like I'm saying go fight with your wife, but I'm saying be brutally honest. You know, and yeah. agree to agree right from the bat that I'm going to disagree with you on a lot of things, and you're going to disagree with me on a lot of things, and it's all good. And I, I'm excited to argue about it, but. Either way, we're going to be brutally honest with each other and tell each other when we're being dumb and just move forward, you know? Love it. That'll be it. But I love that. That's great yeah, advice. That is, that is that really is. great advice. You were brutally honest with uh, your wife, uh, what, yesterday, I think it was. Yep, yep. Phone, yep. <laughs> Always. <laughs> going on a, going on a uh, you know how, you know how insurance carrier award trips are, right? We're, we're, uh, we're going on one to Mexico here pretty soon and talking about like a sailboat ride. And I'm like, I'm, I'm golfing every day. It's my awards trip. I'm golfing every day. Sorry. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, man, I, I so appreciate you coming on. If somebody wanted to find you, uh, where would they find you? Go, go check out my Instagram, the bowl Evans. If you look the bowl Evans on TikTok, Instagram, and even just my website, the bowl Evans.com, you'll be able to find me, um, Instagram and, and TikTok where I post a lot of stuff, my podcast, um, on YouTube and on Spotify, you know, tune in the bull or the bullpen, you know, you search that at love this it. point, I'll pretty, I'll probably come up. So <laughs> I love it, man. Love well, it. thank you so much again for coming on, man. I'm excited. I, I already promised you next year, alpha con, wherever the hell it is. Uh, I will be there to fight off some protesters with you. So uh, let's make that happen, man. And, and I look forward to connecting with you further. But again, thank you so much for your time. And we appreciate it, man. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Great to meet you guys. All right. I just want to thank everybody for watching today. Uh, thank you to Jeremiah, the bull Evans. He was an awesome guest. Super, super happy. He was on here. I learned a lot about him. Uh, really great dude. Hell yeah. I took notes on my own freaking podcast. I had a sheet of, of notes from from when he was talking as I'm hosting a podcast. Right, which is awesome. And, uh, you know, please like, subscribe, comment on that. Uh, you guys interacting with these videos is really what drives uh, this, will allow us to keep doing this. We're having a blast doing it and we need your help. Hey, and also look for uh, look for us on Apple iTunes, Spotify very soon, right? We're, we're launching the audio version of this. So if you're listening to this on your commute, you're not listening to the, or watching the, the video version, you'll see this on Apple, Spotify, wherever you're, uh, wherever you're checking out your podcast. So we always appreciate the support. Uh, if you guys were around early 2022, uh, my goal this year was to have more fun. I'm having a blast doing this. If you can't tell, um, we're going to have a blast this weekend. Yeah, so we like on Sean's bachelor party. So again, thanks for the support. We'll see you next week. See ya.